Yeah, I find it quite a difficult question when people ask us now whether we see ourselves as role models because as, as an athlete you have to be quite quite selfish at times where you do just think about your next performance and what can you best do next to benefit the team. When I think back to my childhood, I, there wasn't one person that I really thought inspired me. It was actually lots of people. It was, it was Thierry Henry. He was totally different to what I was. I was a headering centre half and he was a very elegant centre forward so I don't know why I quite looked up to him but yeah he looked like he loved the game. I used to love watching Richie McCaw for the All Blacks. I fell in love with Kelly Holmes when I saw her take home that double gold. Serena Williams used to love tuning in to watch her at Wimbledon so there was never one person that I really tuned into. I just loved watching people do something that they were really really good at and looking like they were enjoying it at the same time. Well there certainly were f female athletes but they weren't as visible as they currently are and I think you know you certainly would have been looking at, at male athletes and you you know, you, you know, they would have been my role models because they were the ones that you saw all the time. And I think young girls now probably don't realise how lucky they are in so much as that there's, you know, there's female sport on, on TV all the time. It's very accessible. It's on social media all the time. And, you know, they can, you know, they, they can see it in, fr in front of them. And I think if you can see it, then you can be it. And, you know, that's really, really important. And, you know, the Super League has been crucial, you know, with the visibility on Sky Sports and, you know, on YouTube and that. Um, yeah, I, obviously female sport is growing and I think that's so important. Like when I used to go watch Super League games, it was probably about 10 people and it was mainly made up of parents and fa family and friends rather than, the, you know, like selling out the arena, for example, which is incredible now. And there are definitely players like Pamela Cookie that I looked up to and Tamsin Greenway was another one. I thought she was just so clever with what she did um, on the court. So even though I think what was great about that was that even though netball had such a small profile, I could still have players that I looked to and wanted to be like. I'd love to say um, the best advice I had was something really inspirational, but I read somewhere years ago, be the hardest worker in the room and they can't ignore you. And that's something I hold really dear to me as a player. You get some players who are really fast or really tall or have really long arms with great range. But I, I also do think that if you're a really hard worker, that's also a skill. You're not the fastest, tallest, um, most skillful player, but I'll always try and be the hardest working player in training. And that, that to me, even if I've had a shocker of a session, I, I can sleep well at night knowing that I've put in that effort and that work. Things that I would sort of go back to would probably be just to not be afraid to take a risk. You know, I think sometimes girls in particular can, can put up barriers themselves and maybe hold back from things in case that it doesn't work out or in case they don't get selected or, you know, in case they lose. And, you know, I think that that's probably the, the biggest barrier that they will face. And I suppose just having that confidence or I suppose not having a fear of, of you know, not making it. I think for me, what I go back to most when times are difficult on court and off court is just controlling the controllables. I've been told that quite a few times and I think it's really key for me. I think it's massively important. To another saying is like, you know, look in the mirror before you look out the window. And I think it's so easy to kind of blame your surroundings and other things that are going wrong. But if you just focus on you and controlling what you can control, it kind of resets me. Yeah, I remember a coach from when I was younger, he would talk to us and say, play like your first, but train like your second. And for some reason that's always stuck with me. I think in that saying, play with the confidence that you're on top and you've got every confidence in the world to let those ball go and be brave when you're out on court. But when it comes to training, train like you've, you know, want to better yourself. And I love that aspect of being in a netball team and working really hard off the court and you know refining all those little skills that we need to have on court. I think a lot of people would think that uh, depending on your position your characteristics are quite different and they could probably put their hand to most sports but um, netball is, is a physical game despite the fact that it's labelled as a non-contact sport. It's definitely not non-contact I think uh, we can all agree that you have to be physically strong and you take a lot of hits it's it's very fast it's you know the ball's moving very very quick there's a lot of change of direction and you know it's that speed and you know the speed of thought that you need to play at that intensity you know is is, is tough going so um, yeah I think it's a skillful game and and very very fast. Something so cool about our sport is there's so many the positions are so different and 
body types and skills are so different as well, but I think as a standard agility, you've got to be able to be able to change direction, move your body in really tight spaces really quickly. Tenacity, I think you can't be a wet lettuce and play netball anymore. It is pretty dog eat dog, and I know your parents teach you not to snatch, but you do have to be first onto anything. Speed of thought, I don't know if that's a characteristic, but <clears throat> I don't think you have to be the quickest person or player, but actually you've got to have really quick thinking, problem solve really quickly, make decisions really quickly. I know it's cheesy, but you're going to have to say fun. We feel it ourselves at Leeds Rhinos when we overthink things and we get too far in our own heads and we overanalyze and we overtalk things. It, it hinders our enjoyment and actually when we play free and we enjoy ourselves and we remember why we do it and we remember what we're good at, we tend to play our best netball. So the advice I'd just give to anyone wanting to play netball in this region is just to make sure you love it. Like I said, when I first started playing, it wasn't anywhere near semi-professional. Everyone just played because you love it. And I think as great as it is that it is getting professionalised, and I think that's really important for the game because of what we give up, money and politics and stuff does get involved. And that's when, like I said, you lose the love. So as long as you love it, as long as you enjoy it, that's as well when you play your best netball. So just, yeah, don't lose the love of the game.